Now, the solar business, especially residential solar installations, has been kind of picking up steam over the past couple of years, but sort of in the, the small, I, my perception is kind of almost in the small mom and pop type of uh, operation where, you know, one guy decides to start installing. It's growing. You're trying to change all that with what the way you do things. Definitely. So, uh, as you pointed out, the solar installation business today has been mom and pop electricians or con contractors that have gone into the business. Um, what consumers are looking for is a company they can trust that will install a high quality system and will be around to support that system uh, for as long as the solar system is on the roof. And how are you going about doing that, providing that kind of a service, that kind of long-term commitment to consumers? So uh, the first thing we're doing is, is establishing a, a team that will be here for a long time team that knows this business. Uh, we have up to 170 employees um, that know how to install high quality solar systems. The other thing that we do is we install a monitoring service. So every solar system that we deploy, we look at the production of the solar system and make sure it meets the expectations of the customer. So if we tell the customer it's going to produce X, we make sure it produces X. Does anybody else do that? And is there anything like that? in the market space where, where consumers can get feedback and know that they're getting what they paid for? Uh, it's, it, it never used to be available in the market. Um, since the solar monitoring was available or is available today for commercial, but not for residential, because the cost of the monitoring technology outweighs the benefit. Um, so you can buy monitoring technology. It's very expensive, and uh, it's, it's hard to justify it as, as a consumer. But with Solar City, it's included. We give it away for free. Now, one of the main reasons I came to this conference was to show uh, to, to my blog visitors that there's a real inertia that's going, there's a little real momentum that's going across the market space with big money, big corporations involved in these technologies and pushing alternative energy resources. Is solar at the, at the residential and certainly at the uh, commercial level, is it ready to go big time? Without a doubt. Um, the adoption of solar in the last two or three years has been fantastic. Uh, solar has hit a point where it makes financial sense. So the environmental awareness is great. Um, people are becoming more and more conscious of our air pollution and they needing to do things to address it. So they want to look at solar. Then they look at solar and explore it and realize, wow, this is not a bad investment. I actually get a decent return on investment. Uh, and it's green, so it, it, it is solar is now for prime time adoption. And how are you were talking a little bit in your presentation? Tell tell me a little bit about how Solar City is trying to do that do that on a larger level, more than just the one and twos installation. So um, as you pointed out earlier, uh, in order to adopt solar, there's initial capital outlay. Uh, the cap the cost of solar is expensive, even though there's uh, a fair amount of subsidies available. Our vision is to reduce the cost of solar. And the way to do this is to become more efficient at installing solar. If you go to one house and install one solar system, there's traveling costs, there's building department fees, there's sales fees, there's all these different inefficiencies that occur. But if you go to one community and do 50 or 100 homes at one time, you get a tremendous amount of efficiencies. Those efficiencies, we're not putting into our pocket. We're reducing the cost of the consumer benefits from it and we get the larger installation. It's an absolute win-win. We have a large environmental impact, the consumer gets cheaper electricity, and we get a large deployment. Can that even work in tough cities? I live in Oakland. Can you, can you even come into Oakland and do that on that scale and get through their permitting process? Have you got it all figured out? Actually, you happen to bring it up. Uh, we just launched a program uh, in Berkeley, which is just outside of Oakland. Um, we are launching the program in many areas in, in the Bay Area, um, San Jose, uh, Menlo Park, Atherton, San Carlos, these are all areas that we busy uh, launching the community program. But to answer your question, definitely. We can go into an area, we'll work with the building department before we launch the program uh, to see how together we can streamline the process. Now, there's a lot of techno advance. This is stretching. I'm sorry. This just came up to my mind. There's a lot of advancements coming in the field of photovoltaics and, and solar in the next few years. Uh, where does how does your company stand in terms of presenting to the con consumer those you know 
happens, potential advancement? So, personally, I'm very excited about the new technology that's coming out on, on solar. Um, solar City will evaluate and adopt new technology that makes sense. The, the, the two criteria that we're looking for is uh, uh, cost and reliability. So this system needs to last for 30, 40 years in the roof. We will evaluate this on behalf of the consumers and we won't adopt any technology that doesn't fit that criteria. Um, now, that being said, if I was a consumer, I would not wait for that technology. Uh, the state has rebates today. The rebates are reducing and reducing fast. Um, the main benefit that new technology would be, bring is a reduction in cost. But the reduction in rebate will outweigh the reduction in cost savings from the new technology. So in essence, solar is actually going to get a little more expensive over time instead of cheaper. There was, uh, there was some news of recent uh, talking about some of the uh, hurdles and some of the pitfalls of the paperwork involved in those rebates at the state level with installers basically taking on that burden of doing that for their, for their residential installations. Has your company had that same issue and, and how have you addressed it? Um, yes, it's, it's been a little painful. Um, the, the program, but, but to the program's credit, the program is, is a brand new program. It got launched in the beginning of the year. Uh, so it, it, it's been a little bit of a nightmare to get it through the system, um, but they are working with us to improve it. Uh, it's almost improved twofold since they've launched it. It used to take about four or five months to get the rebate paid out. We're looking at around two, two to three months now. And, and, and all indications are showing that they're going to get it down to two months and eventually down to three, uh, one month. So we're in the sun state. We're in the sun belt out here all the way through the, sun, the southwest where solar makes absolute sense. We have tons of sunshine. Where, where else does it make sense in the United States now uh, currently? So um, all of California, it makes sense. Uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't do solar anywhere in California, unless you're on some uh, municipal utility. Um, the other states that make a lot of financial sense is Colorado. Colorado has great subsidies in place and still has a good adoption there. Arizona, uh, Connecticut, Delaware, New Jersey had fantastic incentives that's come to a little bit of a, a halt. But they, they will work through the process to solve that, uh, that rebate process. Um, but states are popping up left and right uh, as they look at California and they want to lead as well, not just look and see. Uh, uh, we don't want to do anything about an environmental impact. All states are realizing that they need to step to the, uh, to the table and, and address their air pollution. Um, this is another off topic, but I had a fellow ask me, he was looking into getting solar for his house, but he lives in a, in a state where there's fairly heavy storms, and he couldn't find any information to say, tell him whether a solar installation could withstand heavy-duty storms over the course of time. So it, it's... It, Solar technology is really tough. I mean, this stuff is designed to handle some severe weather. Um, it can lay in the, the desert. It can be, handle a golf ball size hail storm. It can handle severe winds of 120 miles uh, per hour. So, if he lives in an environment that has hail size uh, hail storms larger than golf ball and winds larger than 120 miles an hour, maybe it's not the best place. But there aren't that many places in. Uh, the U.S. that have such severe uh, weather conditions. He lives, he lives in uh, Cape Cod, so I, I think Massachusetts is probably okay then. Uh, yeah, he, he should be fine. Okay.